Okay. So uh, today we're going to look at uh, how we're going to use a Bayesian inference, right? And uh, one thing about Bayesian is, of course, the subjective probability. How can we uh, express our subjective belief in terms of probability, right? So if you look at uh, probability, there are actually uh, different ways that we can think about probability. So the first one is the classical one, right? Which is where you have uh, equally likely outcome, right? So for example, if you throw a die, then you think that each outcome are equally likely, then you have probability of one over n. Okay, so that's the most basic probability. And the second one is actually, you know, when we have a uh, relative frequency, we uh, repeat the experiments a few times, a large number of times, right? And uh, we look at the number of event, certain event that happens, Right, and the relative frequency is the number of events that happen over the times of the total number of experiments. Okay, so this is what we usually do when we have you no, know, um, when we find the, the estimate or whatever, they are all using the relative frequency. Okay, and uh, the one that we are going to mostly use in um, Bayesian is the subjective frequency, so subjective probability, right, where you use your own judgment, okay? So it is based on the belief and information. So if you look at the example, right, it's like very subjective, right? The probability that a student choose, chosen at random was born in January and the probability that we are in tomorrow. So they are actually very subjective. So if you want to define a subjective probability, we must uh, define uh, some, we must make sure that they actually fulfill the exempt of probability, okay? So the idea here is that it must be coherent or it must be logical, okay? So if you look at the, if you look at, the example, right? For example, we must have the probability of the event must be less or equal to one. Okay, so that is the axiom of probability, meaning that uh, even though it's subjective, it must be rational, right? And it must fulfill the axiom of probability. Okay, so the the important part here is actually if you have a probability of an event. Right, it must be between zero and one, right? So the probability shouldn't be negative, right? And it must be not be bigger than one. Okay, and you have the probability of uh, A union B, right? So if your A and B does not intersect, so this is actually uh, null, this means that A and B does not, does not intersect, right? Then the probability of A union B is actually probability of A plus B. Okay, so if you are looking at, even though we have a very subjective definition of probability, it still must fulfill all the assumptions of probability. That's why it must be a principle of coherent or actually it should be rational. Okay, so even though you say, uh, oh, I have a very subjective probability, but you can say, oh, the probability of uh, E is actually minus one or uh, so it, it does not fulfill the exam of probability. So even though it's subjective, but it should it should be still a probability. Okay. So, so the subjective probability must be consistent with the classical expression of probability, right? But um, the, the idea that the probability that we assign is uh, subjected to our own um, assessment right so you can actually you can still define it as equally likely or so on right but whether it's actually equally likely or not it's actually subjective to your own judgment so you can actually assign any probability that you want as long as it's logical right and of course it must be based on your judgment but based on your judgment is also a defined in a logical way okay this must be a reason for your own judgment Okay, so that is uh, something about the subjective probability. So now we are going to look at a uh, definition which is very important in 
patient, right, which is actually um, similar to what we do, I said last week, right, is this exchangeability, is it similar to IIT, which is uh, independent and directly distributed, but the idea is the independence, right? So if you say that um, we have a data, right, and we have to find the joint distribution, PY given theta, right? So we have Y1 to Yn is our data when you have to find the joint distribution. So in frequencies, we assume that the data is uh, independent, right? So Yi uh, and Yi is independent of Yj and so on. Okay, but for if we were to use the dependence in a Bayesian setting, then the problem is a problem because if you assume, right, if um, if you have ym plus one up to yn, right, and then we have a conditional property, conditional on y1 to ym. So if you have independence, this implies that this equal to ym plus one to yn, meaning that the data from y1 to ym is not does not affect your your sorry, your previous data does not affect your uh, your uh, future data okay so there is no learning experience right because it, it can, we see later on right in Bayesian if you update your data right for so example you have a uh, current your, your current data so you get a posterior distribution you can actually get a new data and you can actually update your posterior uh, given your current data and you update it using the new data so for, in Bayesian actually we don't want we don't want this. We don't want. Uh, we don't want independence because it will imply that um, your history of your previous data is lost. Okay, so we have no learning experience. So this means that we don't want to assume independence for a Bayesian setting. So what happened is uh, in Bayesian they define something called a uh, Exchangeability. Okay, exchangeability means that uh, if you have a set of random variables, so this is definition 3.2, if you have a, a set of random variables y1 to yn, and this set of variables is said to be exchangeable if every permutation y1 to yn has the same joint distribution as every, every other permutation. Okay, so this means that, right, the ordering of the data, for each ordering of the data, then you have the same joint uh, distribution, right? Okay, so for example, if you have, uh, you know, three variables, you have y1, y2, y3, then the probability of the joint PDF of y1, y2, y3 is the same as y2, y3, y1, and so on. Okay, so when you say permutation, it's actually the ordering of your uh, random variables inside your joint PDF. Okay, you might think, oh, they are, they are the same. Uh, I mean, the joint PDF of this one and this one are the same, but uh, sometimes they are not. Okay, so we define the exchangeable Exchangeability as the joint PDF, sorry, the joint distribution of um, each of uh, the ordering, different ordering of the YN, Y1 to YN, is the same if you, if you change the ordering. Even if you change ordering, the, the joint distribution should be the same. Okay, and uh, in, an infinite collection of random variables is exchangeable if every finite sub collection is exchangeable. Okay. Okay. So what does it mean, right? It means that if they are IID, right? If your if your YI is IID, which is independent and adequately distributed, then they are exchangeable. But if they are exchangeable, they are not necessarily IID. Uh, so this is not it's, uh, it's not like a two way. Um, it's only one way, right? So meaning that IID implies exchangeability, but exchangeability does not imply IID. Okay, so if you uh, see over here, right, if you have, uh, this, if your YI is IID, then you can see that 
the joint PDF of uh, Y1 to YN is just the multiple of Y1 to YN, then meaning that if we change the, if we multiply it, okay, and we, oh, okay. Oh, all right. Sorry, I think there's a typo here. This, this is not a comma, okay? There's no comma here. Okay, so we have a uh, probability of Y1, Y by 1 until, this one is you multiply. And then if you multiply Y1 to YN, but if you change the ordering of the multiplication, they are still the same. So meaning that the join, uh, this joint PDF of Y1 to YN is the same for each of the permutation. So if you, even if you change the ordering of Y1 to YN, they still have the same joint PDF. For the case of uh, IID, meaning that they are independent and identically distributed. Okay. So, uh, but if they are if they are exchangeable, okay, if they are exchangeable, then the, they are not necessarily IID. Okay, exchangeable YI has the same marginal, meaning that if YI is uh, exchangeable, then each of the YI has the same marginal distribution. Okay, but they need not be independent. Okay, they have the same they have the same marginal, but they did not be, uh, need not be independent. So exchangeability is actually a weaker assumption than uh, IID. Okay, so if you look uh, in the example, right? So say that we have uh, two random variable y1 and y2, and we have the joint PDF as given here. So we so to show that the y1 and y2 are exchangeable, uh, but they are not independent, right? So what happened here is you have to find the marginal for for the y1. Okay, right. So in this case, in this case, um, in this case, just take note, right? That yeah, you might need to do a lot of uh, integration. Right, a lot of derivative uh, derivation. Right, so for example, if I were to find the marginal of y two, okay, so you have to integrate over the joint PDF. Okay, and then you you integrate over y one, so y one is from zero to one. Okay, and then you get. You will get the marginal, right? And then you have y2 from 0 to 1. And if you do the same for y1, you can show that the marginal of y1 is also uh, similar, right? Okay, so we can show that the marginal of y1 and y2 are the same, meaning that they have the same marginal distribution. Okay, you just change the y1 and y2, right? They have the same marginal distribution. But what happens if you want to find, uh, we want to show they are not independent, then you can look at the uh, conditional, for example, conditional of y1 given y2. So this is just your joint PDF divide by uh, your marginal of y2. Okay, and then you have the joint PDF divide by the marginal, which is uh, y2 is, oh yeah. Okay. So this one is not, you can see over here, this one is not equal to uh, PY1. Okay. So you can see, right, that uh, the conditional Y of Y1 given Y2 is not equal to PY1. So then Y1 and Y2 are not independent. Okay, so this means that uh, from the margin, from the 
joint and the marginal, we can see that they are actually exchangeable because the marginal of Y1 and Y2 are the, the same. So they are actually exchangeable, but they are not independent. Okay, so you can see, right, this means that you can you can actually define a joint PDF where Y1 and Y2 have the same marginal, but uh, the joint PDF, sorry, the, they are not independent. So you can define something which is exchangeable, but they are not IID. They, can, they, they have the same distribution, but they are not independent. Okay, so that's why exchangeability uh, it's actually is a weak, a weaker uh, assumption than independence. Okay. So what happens uh, then with this definition, right? We will we want to use this uh, essentiality uh, to define or to find how to how how do you want to use it to find the joint PDF if you don't want to use independence. Okay, or you want to use essentiality, but we don't want to use independence. Okay, so to do that, right, um, they actually are using this theorem, which is called the Definitis theorem. And uh, in this one, they, they are using the simple, um, I think this is. Uh, this is uh, Bernoulli, okay? So in the uh, in this theorem, we have a uh, exchangeable sequence of zero, one random variable. So Y1 and YN, Y1 to YN is actually Bernoulli, we have zero, one, okay? And we can write it in this form, meaning that the joint PDF of Y1 to YN is actually, you have, uh, the this one is actually the joint for the, Y1 given YN, okay? And this is your Q, and then you actually integrate over theta, D theta, okay? And here they, they define the theta as a limit of the summation of Y1 from one to N, which is the, uh, the average, the limit of the average of Y1, which is the long run average of numbers of one. Okay, so this means that if I were to find a joint PDF for Y1 to YN, right? For for where Y1 to YN is a sequence of zero one, then we can actually write in it this way. So how do we interpret this? Okay. So how do we interpret this? This is this means that um, this is actually. This is actually uh, Y1, uh, actually independent Bernoulli random variable. Okay, so the first part here, right, Y1 is actually Bernoulli. Bernoulli. And they have uh, the property of the Bernoulli is theta. Okay, and they are, this Bernoulli is actually uh, IID, meaning they are independent and they are actually identically distributed. Okay, however, they are actually independent, conditional on the value of some random quantity theta. Okay, meaning that is y given, uh, if you write it, if you want to write it, it's actually yi given theta. Okay, yi given theta is actually independent, given, so yi is actually independent of each other given theta. Okay, so and then the, you will have the theta is actually the limiting relative frequency because this is the average, right? So the li limiting relative frequency of ones, right? And then you have your Q, theta is actually your belief about theta. So this is actually your belief or your uh, prior, okay, or your belief about theta. Okay, uh, so we don't. Uh, if you want to look at the proof, you can look at the any of the other uh, reference book. Okay. So if so, this means that if you were to you want to find the joint PDF of Y1 to YN, right? We can actually um, treat it uh, treat the data YI um, 
so if you so if you define your yi as exchangeable bernoulli then they are actually conditionally independent bernoulli trials conditional on some theta right and then we have a random quantity with prior distribution q theta okay so this means uh, this shows that if i were to have this uh, define this joint pdf right so why i given theta why i is actually independent given theta then i have a prior on theta which is a q theta then right then actually my my joint pdf right you can see my joint pdf given theta okay so this is important but my joint pdf given theta is actually i can just multiply uh, my yi given theta because they are actually conditionally independent okay so if you look in the pre previously if we have the joint pdf uh, of yi it's only p, uh, p yi to yn right okay but here is always conditionally on theta. That's why you need to have the theta here, conditional on theta. So the join PDF conditional on theta is just multiple of each of the yi given theta. Okay, so this always the given theta here. Okay, and then you have in this case because they are exchangeable Bernoulli random variables, then you have this is the Bernoulli PDF. So no, Bernoulli BMF, BMF, sorry. The, the probability distribution. Okay. So this uh, proved the, this means that uh, to find the joint PDF, we can still use the independence, but it's now conditionally independent. Okay, conditional independence. And then, the, and also, right, so you can see, right, if you want to get the joint PDF, so this one is a joint, the actual joint PDF without theta, right? This means that you can have the, this is actually the joint, the conditionally, conditional, posti, uh, sorry, the conditional joint PDF, right? So this is actually your PY given theta. Okay, and then you have to define your Q theta, and then you have to uh, integrate over your Q theta, then only you can get your joint PDF over Y only. Okay. This means that you to use uh, the Bayesian or to actually find the joint PDF, you have to actually define your Q theta, which is your prior. Okay. Right. Then. Right. So this uh, okay. In this, in the to simplify, right? To simplify, to simplify, we will actually to find the joint PDF. We are going to look at the joint PDF conditional on theta, and then we're going to look at the probability of. We can use it, uh, and we can assume it to be conditionally independent, right? And then the, as long as you have to put in given theta, okay? Then you can treat it as is as they are independent but conditional on theta. So this is how you can actually find your joint PDF of your theta y. Okay, right. So if we look at uh, the previous example, right, from uh, last week, right, we have the data, which is a, um, the data is the y is um, the total of the sum of the xi it is binomial 15 theta okay so which actually assume that your y is actually Bernoulli and it's actually independent right so what happened here so if you were to use this data in your Bayesian uh, inference so this will actually imply that your y i given theta is actually uh, so y i is actually independent given theta so this is actually Bernoulli theta Okay, and then if you have your sum of your data, right? So if your y, y is the sum of y i, then this is actually given theta, is actually binomial and theta. 
Okay. So in the basic when you're doing your joint PDF, is the way how you write it. Okay. So in uh, Bayesian, we assume conditional independence. So you always have to show your data is actually independent given data. So it's actually a conditional independence. So that's why in the data, uh, in the joint PDF of in the Bayesian, this always given data inside the formula. OK. So if you're looking at the theorem just now, right? And uh, we are looking at uh, a general method or general theorem. Okay, there is actually a general theorem, so but I'm not going to go through it. But the this will actually implies, right? How we're going to actually find our posterior, okay? Which we actually uh, have seen uh, last week. Uh, and the first one is actually we have to specify a posterior as a prior distribution. Okay, so we have to specify a prior distribution, which is your P data. Okay, and then we have to assume that the data are exchangeable. So they are, so we can treat them as, as if they are actually conditionally independent. Okay, so then you have your YI is actually conditionally independent given theta, and then you have your data, for example, y1 to yn. Okay, so if you were to write the joint distribution of your data, then they are actually joint distribution given theta, then it will be your, each of the, probability, this, uh, the multiple of your probability for each yi given theta, which is, uh, which is proportional to your likelihood given y your likelihood over theta given y. Okay, and if you combine your posterior, combine the two, you can get your posterior, which is the likelihood multiplied by py. Okay. So this, uh, um, the theorem implies, right? So the, just now the theorem actually is for the Bernoulli, right? But a more general theorem then will imply that um, you have to the posterior uh, of theta given y can be obtained if you if you specify the joint PDF, which is the uh, likelihood of theta given y, and you have to specify the prior theta. Okay, so this is what we did last week actually in the in in the example, right? But here is it's just saying that there is actually a theorem for it. Right, so they have to actually, and there is a reason why they have to specify why is it conditionally independent. Um, so, so actually there's a reason for the formula, for all the formula they have given last week. Okay, so that is um, in general, okay. So now we are going to look at a very popular example which is the normal distribution. Uh, Prof, yes. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Yep. So okay. From last week, we defined the likelihood to be equal to the uh, joint distribution con condition on theta. No, uh, no but then, uh, it's actually proportional, actually. It's proportional, is it? Yeah, it's proportional. Uh, so if you look at the uh, last week lecture, it's, uh, it's always proportional. It's, it's not equal. Not equal, huh? Okay, I will have yeah, to. Look. Yeah, have a look, right? So yeah, this one, this is always, uh, this is what we're going to use, and this is what we assume. Even for last week, even with, okay, even with the without the y i given theta, even with, with the y i, uh, even in, in even in the frequencies uh, joint PDF, they always the, uh, the likelihood is always proportional. It's not equal to the joint PDF. Okay, so whether you have the joint PDF for the frequencies or you have the joint PDF for the Bayesian, it's always proportional. Okay, because if you look at last week, um, what happens is when you have the likelihood, um, I will exclude some of the co constant, right? 
uh, you can see from last week, right? There's a constant. I didn't put in the constant, whatever, because in the likelihood, we uh, we always use uh, proportionality, proportional. Okay, so it, it will it will not be uh, the likelihood is okay, the likelihood is actually not a proper PDF. Okay, so the likelihood does not does not have to integrate to one. That's why the likelihood we can just use a proportionality. But for the joint PDF or for the uh, for the joint PDF, it must be a proper PDF. Uh, okay, so that's the difference. There's a difference between the joint distribution and the likelihood. This is a proper, this is actually a proper PMF or PDF. This is not, the likelihood is not a PDF. Uh, okay, so this is a actual PDF. This is not PDF. Okay, that's why the likelihood is a proportionality. So if you look at the note from last week, you might okay. Maybe you are you were uh, confused because I use equal sign at the bottom. Okay, right. Um, okay, maybe uh, maybe I have to explain. Right. Okay. So what happens here is for the in the maths in the maths uh, equation, right? For example, right, you have the likelihood something something proportional to blah 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 blah. Okay. So in the math equation, after the, the proportionality, this one is actually equal sign down here. So the, the down here equal sign is not, this one is not equal to this one. This one is actually equal to the equation on the top. Uh, so if you see the equation and it, it start with the proportional and below here is actually equal. So this one is not equal to the likelihood. This is actually equal to, the, to this part in the first line. So the second line is actually equal to the first line. Uh, okay. So don't be don't be uh, com to be hopefully you are, you are not confused with that. Okay. So the equal the proportional equal sign like this does not mean this is equal to this. This is actually equal to the, this one. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, but I mean, I'm just looking at the notes. It clearly states that likelihood of theta given y equals to prob why given theta in the in review in the notes for chapter one yeah i think on page seven okay let me see yeah 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 seven ah okay right okay so uh, all right
Um, hello, Prof. Are you still there? I thought I was sharing my screen and then it disappears. Oh. Right, yeah, because this is I'm using a I'm using a tablet actually. So I hope it will save before. Oh, okay. At least it's, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, oh. thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. No, I, I think you were, if I'm not mistaken, you were um, right? <laughs> cut off um, from my question until okay. now. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Uh, so no one, I thought we were waiting for your response. So that's why I guess no one said anything. Oh, okay. So you, you did actually hear me uh, respond just now, or? No, no, we didn't hear your, your response. Did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you okay? Right, right, right. Oh, okay. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the internet line. I don't know. Okay. All right. So, yeah, I've been. Oh, 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 okay. Could be because when I the, the screen table, oh, I have to. I have to, the screen saver maybe, it could be the screen saver problem actually. Okay, right, sorry. Okay, going, I've been talking to myself, okay. Um, going back to the, to the, I was talking. Okay, so going back to your question, which I have to explain again, right. I was saying that um, the likelihood is proportional to your joint PDF because um, when you do this, right, when you have the likelihood, it's actually conditional on your y, y. So your y is now a constant. So that's why you can get rid of the some of the constant, and that's why it's actually proportional. Okay, but in the in the in last week lecture, uh, yeah. It, so the thing here is your your likelihood can also be equal. Right. If you don't, you don't get, you don't. If you don't get rid of the constant with the y, it's, it's, it's equal. Okay. But if you get rid of the sum of the constants with the y, then it becomes proportional. So you can either use proportional or equal, as long as you use it properly. Okay. So if it's if it's, if it's equal, meaning that you use the the joint PDF directly, right? But if you simplify it and you get rid of the constant with the y, then it becomes proportional. Okay, so I was talking or saying that. So actually, uh, you can either use equal or proportional, but um, you must be careful um, because the equal signs is exactly the same. But if you simplify it, it's proportional. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's why did you didn't answer me. Oh, okay. So I, I lost you over there. Right. Okay, going uh, back. Uh, can yeah. I ask a question? All right. Uh, so I know that uh, this part of the theorem, actually, we so uh, just to understand whether I understand this whole thing correctly, right? Uh, in general, exchangeable does not mean IID, right? But if yeah. conditional on a theta, they are independent. Exchangeable means independent, right? Yeah, conditional on the parameter, on the, on ah, the data. Yeah. But that, can we also say that they are identically distributed because you have one, uh, they are uh, for, they, they are based on theta, the same theta, right? Conditional. Yeah. So uh, yeah, the independence, yeah, the independence is, so they are conditional independence. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but 
uh, their IID if they come from the same population. I mean, you have to specify the you have to specify in the question, meaning oh. that yeah, if if your uh, if your wife come from the same distribution, then their IID. But okay. But this means right. This means that your wife can also come from different distribution. Can also, oh. right? Ah, that's why in here they only say they are conditionally independent. They don't say is IID because IID means uh, uh, independent and identically distributed, right? Identically distributed means they have to come from the same distribution. But here they only say is conditionally, conditionally independent. Okay, because uh -huh. I was thinking they follow the same distribution because now they are all based on that data, but that's not what uh, we should not. Yeah. yeah, the the data. So yeah, you had yeah. I mean, you then you have to you had, you actually have to define that. Hmm. So for example, uh -huh. um, if if data is uh suppose that this is a uh a Bernoulli variable, so theta is the p right, the probability condition. Oh, okay. So, okay. Uh, I guess that's not quite right, right? The theta is actually distribution for... Why is... I mean, it, it depends on theta, actually. Because hmm. they are Bernoulli, right? So, uh, if you have... Like this, right? If you have the Bernoulli, why I given theta is Bernoulli theta. So, the theta is a parameter in the distribution. Yeah, so 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 in this case, for example, uh, for a specific uh, theta, which is the the for Bernoulli, that would be the p, right? P. Yeah, 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 the p. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is the p. Yes, yeah, this is the p. So uh, in this case, it could uh, be it could be uh, identically distributed lah for for Bernoulli. Uh, yeah, can yeah. Okay. So you have so you mean that if you want to have a IID or condition, conditionally IID, then you have to say they come they have the same distribution. Okay. I, uh, and then I from one to n. Uh, if you do, if you write like this, like this, then this is actually conditionally IID lah. Okay. Uh, but for this theorem, we do not actually need the identical distributed part because we just want to be able to write it as a as a product, right? That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a product. Okay. But of course, as as you say, right? Because you, when you have a data, then you you think they come from the same population, whatever, right? But they might not be, uh, right? It could be, you know, if you have the new data, then you might say, oh, they come from different distribution. So also can, mm. right? They don't have to come from the same distribution. Ah, that's why over here, right? You don't see that, um, but if they have this, usually when you have the data, yeah, we assume they they have the same distribution. Uh, but um, in, in this theorem, it does not have to be, lah. It does okay. not have to be, yeah. But, okay, but, it is a, well, this is another part, right? The other part is the likelihood usually will refer to the same, yeah, the same, the same distribution usually. Okay, okay. so it's like you know, imply, imply of implies lah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and uh, if you say the data comes from the some distribution, right? Then you if you okay, if you write like this right if you write this this means that they come from the same distribution mm. ah because you define the yi right pyi is the same ah so this means they are actually uh, identically distributed because you say that the data comes from some distribution so it means that the, all the yi has the same distribution ah. oh all right yeah, yeah. So that you do, you don't need to say they are identically distributed because you assume they they have the same PDF or PMF. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I've been explaining but normal, but uh, you didn't. No one could hear me. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to look at the normal distribution. Right. The normal distribution. So this one is the popular one. And so this is where, right, you say that Y1 to Yn are exchangeable, right? This is where you, you, you say, right, they are actually, uh, here you say, it's, yeah, actually IID, I mean conditional, uh, conditional, conditionally IID, because we are right, it's Yi given theta, right? Yi given theta is IID, okay? Yi are not IID, Yi given theta is IID, okay, meaning they are, Given theta, they are actually independent and identically distributed from normal. So this means they they are yeah, they come from the same distribution, right? And they are independent, All right? 
then we have the normal uh, the prior okay okay here one thing to note right when you have this kind of distribution you need to identify which is the parameter and which are the constants okay so when you have unknown mean theta so this means theta is your parameter and known variance known variance sigma square so sigma square here is actually a constant okay so you see sigma square here is a constant right and then we have the prior so your theta naught and your sigma naught is also constant okay uh, why is this why i say mean and variance uh, is different because later you can see that you can change it to known mean and unknown variance or in the multivariate case both are unknown uh, okay so when you have a, whenever you have a parameter you have to define whether they are actually parameter or actually constants okay so here then we have the normal distribution um okay so then we have the prior okay and um, here is your full pdf for the prior and to simplify it is again we proportional to theta so anything without theta there up to a multiplication can be um, cancelled so that's why this one i cancel it and this one is also if you open your bracket here this is actually this equation but exponential okay so if it's if it's not exponential you cannot get rid of it because it's uh you know if you have for example a plus b plus c right for example your f is this so you cannot just cancel your b and c you know okay so what happened here is this is actually exponential a times exponential b exponential c all right if this is exponential then it's a it's a multiplication right that's why you can get rid of for example exponential c so in this case we actually get rid of exponential constant times uh, theta naught square so because theta naught square is a constant right uh so sorry we we're missing a theta here okay so anything with theta which is theta square and this theta so these two you cannot get rid of because it's a theta here but this one uh, exponential something something theta not, not square does not have a theta here so we cancel it that's why we can simplify into this form okay and so this is called uh, the kernel right okay so here later when you look at this kernel you should be say oh this is a normal kernel right normal kernel so because you have a theta here right so normal kernel what is the mean the mean is theta not here and the variance is sigma not square uh, okay so there's a kernel of the normal okay so now we are looking at the data right so then the joint pdf is you multiply yeah conditionally iid so you multiply your yi okay and then uh, after you get your so as i said before right your joint pdf is a proper pdf this is actually a proper pdf your likelihood your likelihood theta y is not a pdf okay so actually okay so what happened here is actually if you if you have equal sign then you have to use the actual pdf but then because we want we we want to simplify our likelihood so we have a we have a con, we have a proportional to your joint pdf or join uh, your joint pdf so you have proportionality and this is also using the same technique as your prior right from here you open your bracket here and then you you cancel your constant here this is where i say you have to define your sigma square as constant right you have your sigma square as constant so you simplify here and this one you have to open your summation here you have to open your uh, summation here and this is if, if you open your summation here then you will get a uh, summation of summation of um, okay actually a summation of theta square minus 2 y i theta plus y i square okay so if you open your square it becomes this one and then theta square here is a constant for, you can it's over i right that's why you get n theta square and then this one is also 
two yi, right? Two yi theta. So you have but summation of yi is actually your y bar. Okay, so you have your uh, y uh, sorry y y bar, but because you have summation of yi here, that's why you become it's actually your summation of yi is actually equal to your uh, n y bar. Okay, so that's why you have your y bar here and the n. Okay, and uh, if you look at this uh, equation or this reduced likelihood, okay, if you were think, if you, okay, I know that I said that your likelihood is not a proper PDF, but if you look at your likelihood, right, it looks like also like a kernel of a normal, right? So if you compare over here, right, Two, two theta something. This is the no, the mean, and this one over two something is the kernel. So it's the variance, right? So if you look at this uh, likelihood, it look it looks only looks only as if the mean is a normal and the mean is y bar, and the variance is sigma square over n. Looks like uh, not a proper PDF, but it looks like the kernel of a normal. Right, which is the um, this y bar is your mean and sigma square over n is your variance. Okay, and um, so to find the posterior, right, you have to multiply your prior with your likelihood. Okay, you have to multiply it and then simplify it. Uh, this is given into two, two actually next uh, after this. Because you have to open, you have to simplify, you have to open, you have to rearrange and edit, blah, blah, blah. And then you can actually show that it will be equal to this one, this um, equation, this equation. And W is actually, is the weight, weight right? It, it's actually a uh, weight, weight, uh, weight for your using a function of your sigma, sigma and sigma square and sigma not square. So this weight is actually between 0 and 1. W is between 0 and 1. Okay, and your you can see right that okay. So if you go back, if you look at this kernel, so again it's a normal kernel. Okay, so again you have the kernel of normal, and if you again look at the prior, sorry, the prior right. This one is your mean. This one is your mean. This one is your variance. Okay, sigma square times two two, sorry, theta square minus two theta something. Something is your mean, and the one over two something is your variance. So if you look at this equation, you have theta square over two theta something. So this something here is your mean, right? And then you have to re rewrite this because this this should be if you rewrite it as one over two w sigma square over n. So this would be your variance. Okay, that's why I say you need to, after this, uh, I think I posted tutorial one uh, on Spectrum already. Your, your one, of the, one of the questions is for you to actually look at the kernel of the distribution. Okay, and given a kernel, you have to identify the distribution in okay, both ways. Right, so you have here, if you have this is like a kernel of the normal. So this is your mean and this is your variance. So that's why you have your posterior is now normal with this mean and this variance, okay, and you can see that, right, one thing interesting to see, right, that this is actually a weighted average, okay, weighted average, why, because you can see here, W is your weight, right, between 0 and 1, so that y, y bar is the mean of, average of your data, and theta naught is the mean of your prior, okay, so this is actually a weighted average of your mean, the mean of your data and the mean of your prior. Okay, and uh, uh, we can see we will see the the behavior of this with the average later. Okay. Okay, zero seven. Um. Okay, right. And uh, yeah, and this. This is not the this showing is actually not straightforward, which is why it's one of the tutorial questions. Okay, right. Right, so now we're going to look at example. So we have 
systolic blood pressure is around 120 uh, milli mmHg. I'm not sure what the Hg do. 20, and then we have uh, data, right? We have a data. So here we have 20 elderly men. So if X is the uh, blood pressure of 20 of elderly men, then the 20 is uh, your sample size. Okay, we have a sample size of 20, right? And then we have a mean of 138. Okay, so depending on you want, if you want to use Y bar or X, but usually for here we use a uh, Y, so your data Y bar is 138. Okay, and suppose the variance of the measurement is known to be 20 square. So this is your variance. So this is your sigma square is 20 over 2. Okay. Suppose that our prior belief is that the elderly men have similar blood pressure to the general population. Okay, so this means that we um, we have a prior where we assume that your theta naught your theta naught is equal to the general population, which is one twenty. So your theta naught is one twenty. Okay, because this is a, in, in general, but then we have a data from a elderly man, so it's not the same as the general population, right? So we have the data, which is 20, pe uh, 20 people, and then we have the sigma square, and then we have the y bar. Okay, so in this question, what happens here is we want to change the prior variance of your uh, your prior, uh, prior variance. Okay, so here in one, two, and three, we will change the prior variance, meaning that this one is sigma naught square is 20 square. This one, uh, sigma naught square is five square and sigma naught square is 100 square. Okay, so the first one is the variance is to be the same as your uh, population variance, which is 20 square, or we have a very strong belief, right? We have a small variance in the prior or very vague meaning that we have very large variance, which is 100 square. Okay, and in each case, we want to find the corresponding posterior distribution and the posterior property that the blood pressure of elderly men is more than 135. Okay, we want to find the property that your theta is actually larger than 135 using the posterior distribution. Okay, so in, uh, in these cases, in this case, actually, you can just use the... Uh, um, formula from before, okay. So, but just take note, right? Because we have your data, we have your data, right? And we assume your data is normal with mean theta and your variance is theta square, okay? So this is your data, and then the in in our data because we have from the data which is which is uh, which is a twenty, right? We have the y bar. Okay. Uh, this is I said this is why we have the sorry when you have the likelihood. Oh, right from the okay, this one, right? You can see over here, right? The likelihood. This is why I say right. The likelihood, as if your data is normal with mean y bar and variance sigma square over n. As if, right? As if, then your likelihood so from your data right your data or your likelihood then is as if you have your data is normal then we have your y bar is 138 and then you have your variance is sigma square over n so it's actually 20 square over 20 sample size 20 then you have 20. okay this is your from the data as if, right? Okay, so the first question would be, right, if your prior is normal and then you have the same, the same, uh, we have theta, theta naught is 120 and then we have your variance is 20 square. Okay, so 
if we apply, okay, I think uh, for the first example, first you have to find your W, right? Okay, so what happened here is, because I don't think I have enough space to write everything. So what happened here is I'm going to use this formula here, this W formula here. I will, I'm going to plug in my theta naught square everything and also my W, right? And then I will get the answer. Okay, you can try uh, and calculate yourself, right? So your W, for the first one, your W is going to be 0 0.952, okay? And the mean, the mean is actually, if you use your formula, which is WY bar plus Y minus W theta naught, you will get 137.14, and the variance using this formula, you will get 19.05. Okay, so just plug in the formula, calculate. Okay, that's why in the question, uh, I, you have to define, right, what is your Y bar here, right? Y bar is 138, sigma square is 20 square, all right? Theta naught is 120. Okay, so the difference in question one, two, and three is just your theta not uh, sigma three, sigma not square, your variance of your prior. Whether it is same as your sigma square or smaller or larger. Okay, so in this case, but right, um, so if you think, oh, the variance does not affect the mean, right? Because the, the thing here with the formula is. Inside your W, right, you have your variance here, sigma, your variance of your prior sigma not square and the variance of your data, which is sigma square. So your variance actually will affect your weight. Okay, so the weight will actually affect your mean and your variance. So if you, whenever you, so if you change your prior, the variance of your prior, you will also affect the mean and the variance of your posterior. Okay, here, right. So it, then after you plug in and you calculate, then you will actually get your posterior is actually going to be the mean um, normal with this mean and this variance. Okay. And uh, if you want to find, for example, you want to find the probability of the posterior probability, theta bigger than 135, given the data, so this is a posterior probability, right? So actually this is, uh, you have to integrate, right? Or you know, if you have the posterior, if you have the posterior probability, you have to integrate your posterior, or you can use your normal, right? Which is, uh, or, or actually, so D theta, Oh, actually, if you use the normal, the normal table, it's actually the probability of your, because this is normal, right? Your normal, standard normal, right? 1, 3, 5, 1, 1, 1, 1 4, divided by square root of 19.5, and so on. So you get the probability is actually 0 0.69. Okay, one thing here is, I don't expect you to find this. You can actually, you can actually use, R to get this. Okay, so we, we're going to have an R class in two weeks' time next 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 week. So we can, I can show you how to get your answer using R. So I don't. That's why I don't really share this part because you don't really need to find it because a lot of the distribution you cannot calculate by hand. So you also, you need to find R. For example, for gamma, for beta, all the distribution you don't need. You cannot calculate by hand to get the probability. So yeah. So anyway, in this case, it's, a norm, it's normal, so you can actually get it, but you don't need to. Okay, so if you have, this means that if you have, uh, for in the first case, right, you have this distribution, then the probability of theta bigger than 135 is actually 0 0.69. Okay, so in the second case, right, where you have your prior is normal with 120, and then you have your variance is 5 square. Then, okay, this one up to you to calculate. The posterior is actually normal with 130, 11.1. And, uh, oh, okay, so I don't have enough space. Okay, I write too, too large. 
probability of theta bigger than 135, the posterior probability is actually very small, 0 0.07. Okay, and number three, yeah, okay, I, right, I need more space. The posterior, sorry, the prior is actually normal, 120, 100, okay. So in the last case, this is actually called a vague prior, meaning that your variance is actually very large. Okay, your variance is actually very large, then you will get your posterior is, oh, your posterior is actually normal 137.96. Nineteen point nine six. Then the probability is actually zero point seven five. Okay, so one thing. Okay, why am I showing this? Right, you can see right if you for number three, if you are using a very large variance. Okay, this this value of your posterior is actually very close to your likelihood, right? Which is you no. Know, if you look at your likelihood as if you are 138, right, and 20, this is from the data. So if then if you look, use the number three, the very big prior, then it's actually very close to 138 and very close to 20. So actually your posterior in the number three is actually very close to the, the, to the distribution from your likelihood, okay? And if you use number two, which is a very small variance, then actually this would be uh, quite far from your data, right? And uh, so this, the probability is actually very small. And number two is, number one is actually quite close also to your data, which is 137. Your Y bar is 138, right? And this is 19, is close to 20. Okay. Okay, how do we see this? Actually, I plotted it. Okay, right. Let me see. Oh, maybe can make it larger. Oh, right. Okay. So if this is for number one, right? Number one. So this is your prior is normal, one twenty and twenty square, right? So this your red one is your prior, right? And the blue one is the like your likelihood, and the green one is your posterior. So your likelihood and posterior is close, but not exactly the same, actually, right? So they are actually close, and you can see that your variance, okay, because this is normal, right? Because your variance has gone to 19.05, so it becomes sharp because your, your posterior is actually 137 and 19.05. Okay, so you can see, right, your posterior is actually very sharp normal and uh, your likelihood, so your prior is actually very low. Okay, so that is for the first example. If you have the second one, okay, this is the second one, right? Then you have your prior is actually 120 and then you have five square. Right, so your data, your prior is actually the red one. Okay, and then your likelihood is actually, because your likelihood is actually uh, 138, uh, mean 138 variance 20, right? Okay, so it, your posterior is actually a compromise between your prior and your likelihood. So you get something in the, in the middle. Okay, so for your, then, you can see that they've shifted the mean, right, and the variance. So this is when you have a very, um, because your prior is actually, is actually very strong. Okay, then you have this. Right, wait, this is 20 square. Wait, did I plot this? Oh, okay, wait. Right, and it, this is something five square. Okay, it's for number two, I, I have to check, go and check back my 11, 
this is 20. Ah, okay, okay. Right, I think it should be correct because even though it's five square, but your posterior is actually sharper because it's normal 1301.5. Yeah. So you have your, you can see, right, and your data, your data is, your Y bar is actually, so your your data is actually normal 13820. 138, right? Okay, so you can see, right? Your prior is 120, five score, uh, wait, 120. Your data is actually 138. So your posterior is actually a compromise between your prior and your data and become the green and become the mean, I mean the average or the bit average of your of your prior and your data. Okay, so this is uh, for number two. Okay, and for number Three, so this is why you have very flat prior or no, or very vague prior because your theta is actually normal uh, with mean 120, but your variance is 100 square. So it's actually very flat. Okay, I didn't draw at the end because it's too large, it's too flat. So this is your prior, which is the red one. And then you can see your posterior and your left head are actually very close to each other. Okay, your is actually very close to each other. And this is, oh, sorry. This is because, okay, what happened here is um, explained in this part, right? Because, because the posterior is actually a compromise between the prior and your data. Okay, so because you have, this is the mean, right? Why, why uh, the mean, uh, the posterior mean is actually a weighted with the average of your data y bar and the mean of your prior data not. Okay. So weighted combination of your, yeah, this is what I say, right? And the data mean, which is your y bar. Okay, and you can see, right? Because, um, because your data, because your formula for your weight is actually, let me see. The formula for your weight Right, for W is actually uh, theta naught square over theta naught square over sigma over n. Okay, so if you have no data, okay, if you have no data, then actually the posterior is, is the same as the prior. Okay, if you have no data, then posterior is the same as the prior. And if you have a very large data as your n goes to infinity, right? And so this w will be uh, very large. Uh, okay, this w will become very large because this one is very small, right? So, the, uh, so it will go to one, sorry. This, as your n goes to infinity, this will go to, w will go to one. Okay, meaning that one the minus w will go to zero. So as your n goes to infinity, then the data test over. The mean of the this posterior mean will go to y bar. Okay, and this means that you no know, the Bayesian and the frequencies uh, estimate will be exactly the same. Because as you have more data, if you have very large data, then we have to believe the data, which is the evidence. Okay. Uh, so, do you have any question, class? Before we move on to the next part. Oh, I don't know whether we can. Oh, okay. No. Right. Okay. So for the previous example, right, you can try on your own to calculate, right? But to get the plot, yeah, this is something that we can do in R later. Um, I think uh, you know, to visualize the plot is also quite nice. So we can do that uh, using R. Okay. Right. So now, now we, will, we have the distribution, right? Now we have the distribution. What can we do with the distribution, right? Because it's, distribution is, doesn't mean anything. We have to use it to, for inference, right? We want, we want, usually we want to summarize. We can plot it just now, like just now. We can plot the shape of distribution. 
we can look at the location and dispersion, right? The mean, the median, the variance, and quartile. Or we can look at the interval, which is called the credible interval, right? Or we can look at the probability. Uh, so that is the thing that we can do when we have a distribution. And one of the things that uh, people will use it is for the interval, right? And this is actually similar to the confidence interval, but this is called credible interval or posterior interval for Bayesian. So there are two kinds of interval, uh, two kind of things which is called the credible interval and the highest density region. So the CI or the credible interval uh, actually uh, interval with which we have the so it's a similar definition as the 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 usual interval, right? We have one minus alpha hundred percent credible interval. It's an interval for which in we have the one minus alpha hundred percent of the posterior distribution lies. Okay, so if you have this, so it's actually you know easier to draw. Okay, so if you have a uh, distribution, right? And then you have the lower limit. So theta L is your lower limit and your theta U is your upper limit, right? So this area here is Y minus alpha. Okay, the probability of being, the probability of theta being inside this interval from theta L to theta U is actually Y minus alpha. So this is a probability. One minus alpha is actually a, a actual probability so it should be between zero and one. Okay, and um, so if you look at this picture, right, actually you, there's, there's a lot of possible intervals which we can use. But again, you know, similar to our frequencies, we like it to make it easier. So usually people will use this area here is alpha over two, this area here is alpha over two. Okay, so the theta less than theta L, so this part here, theta less than theta L is alpha over two, Oh, okay. Uh, uh, oh, I didn't change my still typo here. I thought I changed it. This one is actually bigger, right? Bigger than. Okay. Theta bigger than uh, theta u, which is this part here. So theta bigger than theta u is actually alpha. Uh, the probability is alpha over 2 also. Okay. So this is one of the ways, right? And uh, the usual way that we define our credible interval. Okay, and how do you want to find our credible interval is we can use the percentile, right? So this one, this theta L would be the alpha over two percentile. So if you use percentile here, it should be P alpha over two. And then this would be the percentile of one minus alpha over two. Okay, for example, right? For example, if your alpha, if your alpha is 0 0.05, so this would be your P 0 0.025, and this is your P 0 0.975 percentile. Okay, so why percentile? Because we actually have a distribution, right? So we can actually find the percentile for that particular distribution. And we can also do that by using R. So because if you have a normal, we can use a normal table. But if it's not a normal distribution, we don't have a table, but we can actually use R to actually find this percentile here. Okay. And this credible interval will actually have a probability, one minus alpha. Um, this is not uh, 100% actually. Uh, yeah, one minus alpha high percent probability that uh, you know theta is between theta L and theta U, so which is this area pretty one over one minus alpha. Okay, right, right. So before we take a break, okay, just go. Oh. Okay, so for this example, right, actually. You can just use because this one is actually using the normal table, right? So if you have, for example, if you have the credit, sorry, if you have the posterior distribution, theta given y is normal, 
and then you have the mean, and then you have the variance, right? Then uh, if you want to find the 95% credible interval, it will be same the same as the the way that you do for the frequencies, right? You have the mean, you have the mean, right? Plus minus 95% would be, this is your standard alpha, which is uh, Z alpha, Z alpha over two, so 0, 0 0.025. Then you have your square root of your variance, right? And this is your 1.96. Okay, right, and then the, you can get your interval is this. Okay, so if you have a normal, because you have a normal table, you can actually use the same way as you use the uh, frequencies, right? You have the mean, and then you have the 1.96, the uh, Z alpha, alpha, sorry, alpha over two and then square root of your variance. So you can get the interval. Or you can use the R and you can actually find, this is also the same as your um, normal. This is actually your 0 0.025 percentile and your 0 0.975 percentile from the normal with this mean and variance. So if you use, if you use, use R and you find the percentile for the 0 0.0, for, for 2.5 and 97.5, you also get the same answer. Okay? You can do the same for number two and number three, uh, which is, you no, know, you can get the, the person, sorry, the variable interval. So I'm just going to share with you. You can calculate on your own later. So 9.2, seven okay right so you can calculate using the um, normal or you can calculate using r find the percentile and then you should get the same answer okay right so before we stop uh for a break do you have any question class uh, all right Uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Okay. Hi. I just, I just, I just want to ask. Uh, will we learn um MC MC in this course? Yeah, we're going to learn that later. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, because.